Hello and welcome to Really Dicey. Today we're going to talk about GM advice. In fact, each of us will give our best piece of advice. You want to go first, Daniel? Sure. Um, my best advice I can give you is that learn to love to improv. <laughs> um, I know many of you have worked really hard in writing the backstory to your backstory to your backstory of your campaign. <laughs> yep. And uh, you have everything mapped out and ready, but always be prepared for your players to take the left turn to Albuquerque and go someplace where you never expected them to go. It's happened all the time. Yep. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I planned something in my youth and it never goes that way at all. It could be something as simple as just going to the bar. You know, yep. I want to go to the bar so they could get a quest there so they could go to the castle and save someone. And that could end up being, they just end up burning down the bar and not getting that information at all. Exactly. You know? no, you're absolutely right. You do have to roll with the punches. I, um, I ran this campaign, and it was the best campaign I've ever had. It was fantastic, but the characters derailed it at the very start. Yeah. The very start. Of the, the, the game was about the rightful heir to the throne uh, being usurped. He was, he was accused of a terrible crime and chased out. And the players were his entourage. And he was trying to kind of fighting to take back his kingdom. And I was envisioning a Robin Hood type game where they harass the bad guys and, and they, uh, you know, they, they make forays in the different castles and they steal things. And, you know, a small group of people fighting the large evil kingdom. Within two sessions, they had a goddamn army. An army. They, 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 they went to talk to these people and made this deal with them and ended up with a, a small army. Completely changed the campaign. Totally. So now it was, a, it was this, this political game about, about armies moving each other around. I mean, they still had the small army and they, their, their tactics were really kind of running away from the larger army, and, you know. Um, but I had to just roll with it. And if I hadn't, I would have been frustrated. I would have been fighting them. I would have tried to take their army away from them. They would have been unhappy. I would have been unhappy. It would have been a mess. Yeah. Instead, it became best campaign I ever ran because I took all that hard work I did and threw it away and was <laughs> willing to just go with what I had, you know? Yeah. You know what, what taught me to, like, improv? to be prepared for anything is that there's, there was times, and I'm sure in your youth you experienced it as well, where, um, you know, it could have been a, a Tuesday night and then you get this knock on your door and say, hey, we want to play. <laughs> yes. But but I, I don't have anything planned out yet, but we want to play. But I, 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 I got to look for my books. I, think, I don't care. We have dice. We got to play. So I had to learn, like, a lot of time. And, you know, I, I enjoyed game yeah, mastering. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't mind, but it was a little stressful. So I... I had to be prepared. Well, two things. I, I first had to figure out what they wanted to play exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, we're doing a campaign. What are you want to play? And it looks like, for the most part, they just wanted to vent their stress and something. You yeah, know? So you put something in a dungeon so we can hit it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so something I'll, I'll, I'll just do with like a random dungeon on the spot and just yep. just go to my... Sometimes I'll just make a monster on the spot. Like sure. A, like, like they, or you face this thing that's green and slimy and it rises up yeah! and forms... Exactly. Uh, forms to a human and form comes at you and it looks acidic. What do you do? And then just, you know, they let, let them freak out about it. Let them, yep. let them figure yep. out what to do with that problem. They, they, you want, they want problems, I give them problems. Give them problems. <laughs> and, you know, uh, what you were saying about uh, improvising and not writing it, give them problems, not solutions. Mm. Because they will not come to the same solutions that you make. So yes. don't bother. Write a great ending, you know, write a loose, I mean, write a, write a great beginning, write a, lo a loose middle, don't bother to write an ending. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're not going to go there. Yeah. I also watch a lot of TV growing up. I also watch, I mean, read a lot of like books and comic books. Sure, and so forth. sure. So that helped me flesh out NPCs on the spot as well. Yep. Because I find that sometimes challenging. Especially yeah. when they ask me what the name of the NPC is. Like, oh, crap. Uh, uh, Tom McGaffin? <laughs> I used to play uh, with a list of names. Mm. So I give them to random people. And the reason I did that 
is because my players were jerks. Oh my god. So this they I don't know if they planned this ahead of time among themselves or they each decided to be a jerk and fed off each other. They went into a town and they start they they you know, they walked up to a merchant and they asked him his name. Then they asked somebody else their name. They asked everybody their name. Just to watch me scramble for a name. I eventually had the city guard arrest them for pestering people. But and of course then they asked the city guard his name. But he beat them up. So. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, you just have to be able to you improvise quickly. Um, and you can do some planning to help you with the improvisation. Yeah. Like that list of names that I used to keep. But um, and the other thing that uh, my DM taught me, you know, because I started as a player and then I became a DM, is that uh, it's, it is completely acceptable to steal ideas. Hmm. Because yes. we're not writing a book, we're not writing a movie, no one's going to sue us, no one cares if it's not a really uh, an original idea, this isn't high art or commercial art, it's just some friends having, a, having, having fun at a table. So... Hmm. If you need a plot, feel free to steal it from last night's Xena and go with it. <laughs> you need a character? Hey, I saw this guy in the love boat. We'll just put him in a, you know, put him in some armor, and there he is. <laughs> you know, I've never had a player say to me, "Hey, we shouldn't use that because uh, that seems like too much like this character." Yeah, I see. no one's ever I, said that. <laughs> in fact, I always get the opposite. Like, oh wait, are we finding someone that looks like that acts like Darth Vader? Because if we're doing playing Star Wars, then we're finding someone that acts or or looks like Vader, yeah, they want to fight Vader. Of course yeah, they would. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Sure, they may die, but <laughs> but I think having Captain similar to it, it, it gives them gives them that excitement to like like we're facing something or dealing with something like it. Yeah, like, yeah, like we've seen exactly. In their, in their favorite shows or favorite movies. The only time I went too far is when I described the character as looking like one of our professors. <laughs> and uh, one of my players afterwards, he said, "You jerk! Now I can't get now I can't go to class without seeing him with a you know with a pirate cutlass." <laughs> so I suppose maybe you shouldn't base characters on people you actually interact with on a daily basis. So, so my advice to uh, game masters and dungeon masters about improv because some of them are are not good with improv. Yep. Um, and it's it's and I can understand that it's stressful for them where they they have to do a game instantly and they don't want it to suck. Yeah. And they're they're not sure what to do. Um, my advice for them is. I'll try to have a notepad with you yeah. and write yeah. down ideas here and there. Yep. Um, when you have an adventure, uh, feel free to do your research. Feel free to think about what monsters you want to use. Um, but keep it uh, keep it light. Uh, don't. And what I mean by light is like don't don't worry about too many details to your to this quest. You know, a lot of times the players will fill out those holes, uh, <laughs> those plot yeah. holes themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, if you know they're trekking through a forest, you know, you may want to have in mind, like, okay, there might be goblins there. There may be some rogue elves there. They may have uh, uh, some traps there. Maybe some, some bugbears or something like that. They, may, You know, have in mind something so that it keeps the game excited, uh, uh, keep the game exciting. Um, you know, just at times, just, just listen to music. What I do sometimes is I listen to music. Yep, um, okay. And uh, sometimes, depending... Well, in my mood, I might listen to like metal or rap or whatever. But then I just start thinking of a story, and then I I try to remember elements of that or write it down, so that uh, whenever I have to do it, and, and some, you know, like something on the spot, I can look at some of my notes like, oh, I have this cool idea. I'm gonna save it for this adventure. Yeah, that's great. See idea. where it goes. Yeah. Um, be careful with magic items. The distribution, the distribution of magic items and gold, if you haven't planned so already, because too much gold may may make things harder for you if you're mm -hmm. trying to make yeah, things more challenging true. for them. Yep. And especially magic items. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, yeah. You know. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, if you're not good with improvisation, find out exactly how much preparation you need and kind of bank a little bit of that. Yeah. Do that ahead of time. Do as much as you think you need to make yourself comfortable and then just put it over there. And they show up and say, we need a game. You can say, oh, here's one. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of products that do exactly that. There are a lot of products out there by all sorts of different companies which are mini adventures or hooks or, you know, five minute dungeons or, or um, you know, different things. I, 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 had a, I had a little tiny box set of uh, 
you know, one book was maps and one book was simple little adventure hooks and treasure, and you can just kind of mix them up and play. Yeah. So there are there are things you can do to prepare to be unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's good advice. Now, if, if you're fortunate, <laughs> uh, game masters listening to this, you may have players, and I've called, uh, come across a few where they they don't really want to do like an improv adventure. They actually want to do a real adventure. A real module, something like, uh, for example, a Tomb of Horrors. Oh, you know, yes. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, when I when I played Tomb of Horrors, I wasn't looking to like, oh, let me go to the town. <laughs> what? Door. No, you said you no, were going. <laughs> no, I don't. I wasn't interested in exploring the forest. I was, right. I didn't want to meet anyone new in town. Uh, uh, all I, what I wanted to do was what I agreed with my game master to do was play Tomb of Horrors. You know, I had my Good. character ready. <laughs> Thank I had, you. I, I had my character. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Matt was my game master for that one. Yeah. And, but but the whole group was like that too. We was like, all right, we want to go through this tomb and see if we can survive. Yep. yep. And and I think that made things easier. Oh know? well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always a lot easier if you have people who don't want to play the game. Then that's always a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, where are you going? Yeah, so a lot of times, so, so, not a lot of times, but sometimes you, you're fortunate that you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes they want to play a module. Sometimes they want to they want to go someplace specific. So um, uh, you may, if you have a module or something like that similar to it, you probably can use that, you know. Um, but if you have to improv a dungeon that's tricky, uh, I know there's dice. We were talking about this earlier. Yes. There are yep. dice where you can roll and kind of make a dungeon as is. There are websites where you can create a dungeon as is as well. Yep. But then you have to think about certain questions like, all right, what am I going to put in this dungeon? What monsters am I going to put in here? And you have to be careful, think about making it too logical because <laughs> you're going to be really frustrated soon because then first you got to think of like, why does dungeon exist? Why is there a vampire in this dungeon? Why, you know, like, just, you know. Mad wizards. Yeah. It's all mad wizards. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just rule with it. Just let them have a great time. Yep. So, you want to hear my advice? Yes. Okay. My number one advice on uh, how to run a good game is overacting! <laughs> yes! So this hobby of ours is a verbal hobby where the GM uh, describes to the players what they see. And I have found that the best way to do that is to just throw yourself right into it. Make Do the silly voices, you know? Um, you don't have to wear the costumes, but you know, sometimes it helps. I ran a Star Wars game. I did it in Jedi robes, and I had a lightsaber. <laughs> you know, and, and the truth is, you may look silly. You, you may look dumb. We're not actors. You're probably not actors. So, uh, but you, you, you have to be willing to look silly. Yeah. And you should be willing. These are your friends. They're, they're not going to mind. And the reason you want to, you know, overact and get into it is that it helps them get into it. Yeah. It really kind of brings them into it. I, um, I wrote an adventure recently. I uh, ran it a, you know, a couple months ago for my friends. And at the beginning of the adventure, an NPC has a heart attack. And so the NPC is just talking away. And uh, when I got there, I didn't, I didn't describe her having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and now, did I look stupid? Yeah, I look stupid. <laughs> was that dumb? Yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> but it's fun. But that was the point, you know? And it brought the characters in that. And, and... You want everybody at the table to be invested yeah. in the game. That is the best part of the game. When yeah. people are invested in the game and are having fun and are, are really involved, nothing else matters. The, the rules don't matter. The story really doesn't matter. Uh, and what matters the least is that you look like an idiot. Of course. <laughs> Who cares if you look like an idiot? You're having fun. You make the other characters have fun. That's what it's all about. I agree with you. Um, I think that role-playing games, just like most games, people want to play for escapism. Yeah. A bit, you know, they yeah. want to. They they're looking to uh, an escape from the real world and just just kind of vent out or or get get their yagas out in a <laughs> role-playing game. Sure. You know? um, they it's I think giving them the option to act, you know, 
helps them a lot to to express whatever is going on in the back of their schools. You know, yep. maybe they had a hard day at work, so I just want to go out and do some treasure hunting when I get home. You know, I want to be uh, be a dwarf and just go 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 get some gold and like, oh, there's a dragon here. Oh crap, let's go kill it. Ah, you know, just and I I, I think like my my brother Hobo friends from yesteryear. Um, uh, they didn't enjoy destroying things just for destroying things. I never saw it that way. I saw it that they were all were all living in a city and were going through a lot of crazy stuff at home and in the streets and in school. And we we had this role playing game where we could just act out all this tension that we've been building. Yep. You know. Yep. And by giving them acting as well. Yep. You know, like if they want to be like uh, Mad Max, crazy warriors in, in the post apocalyptic world, and they just want to destroy everything in sight. Go ahead, let's do it. You know, ah, oh, let's do. You know, and I think that's, that, that's, that, that, I think that's like a really healthy outlet. Yeah, I think so. One note of caution. Um, so, as the GM, you want to be willing. You want to overact and be willing to look mm. stupid. You do not want to make any of your players look stupid. Yes. Don't, don't, don't make them overact. Encourage them if yes. they want to, and if they want to, then then you can reward it. But some people are shyer, some people aren't comfortable with that. That is perfectly okay. Yeah. I wore a costume. I never made any of them wear costumes. I met players yeah. that didn't like to act; like they were too shy because they yeah, were too shy. That's fine. And but I I want to tell this to game masters too because I think sometimes they they think just because they're shy, they're not into it. It's not that; it's just they're shy. It's it's. It's, it's very difficult to express that weird side of yourself to people that even if you may know them for a long time, it's still it's, it's still a lot of, for them, it's still maybe a very unfamiliar thing to do. Yeah. You know, but take what they're doing seriously. And yeah. who knows, they may actually open up. I had yeah, this, absolutely. They had this, I had this one player who uh, was very quiet, very shy, but she was into it. And I would, what I would do is I would give her like some scenarios for her to solve. That's her to solve herself. Let's see how she would do. And she would enjoy it, and, and she was was grateful that even though she didn't have to act, you know, or do anything like I would do, because she knows I, I tend to go a little crazy sometimes <laughs> with, my, with my NPCs. Um, well, that's another topic we could talk about, too. Um, uh, but the, the fact that I took her seriously, like as a player, that, that meant a lot to her. Yeah. You know? No, I think that's absolutely right. And don't, you know, don't force your player to... Act. Yeah. You, you think of yourself as one of those performers at a Renaissance fair, right? You're, they're in character. They're the hunchback and everything. And um, they never break character regardless of what the people going to the fair says to them. So yeah. if I'm talking to a character, if I'm talking to, you know, I'm on the DM and you're a player and I'm talking to you in character, like, ah, yes, you finally come to your destiny. Step to and, and, but you don't. But your character just says, "Well, I tell him that I'm from the village," hmm. but you don't, you don't act out. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. I accept that and say, and, and then I act as if you had been talking in character. Yes. You know, do I prefer when the character when the players talk in character? Sure, I do. But yeah. I'm not going to force any of them to talk in character or anything like that. Yeah. So, I have to be willing to be the one at the table who looks really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I agree. And I, there's been times where, I think for us as, as a game master, that gets me an outlet to do just crazy wacky yeah, things. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, you know, if you if, once you get over that hump of looking stupid, it's just really freeing. <laughs> yeah. But going back to what I mentioned before about NPCs, having adding a little acting to NPCs really does make the game more... At least for me, more more interesting. Sure. You know? Yeah, I love like, NPCs. Like we, we were, I was playing with this group, and they didn't have a cleric, and they're new players. So I didn't want them all to die <laughs> that quickly, so I made a cleric to join them as NPC to help them out. Yeah. And but I, I, I didn't want to. I had to be careful not to make it uh, like an uh, NPC that's going to be over them, that's going to help them out with every single hour. I didn't want them to th make it easy for them. Right. At the same right. time. So I, I, I remember his name was Lewis. And uh, this NPC was like a young cleric coming out of school. <laughs> uh, 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 I like it. I like you know? it. Lewis the acolyte. Yeah, and he's, he's so new to everything, like yeah, adventuring yeah. and everything. And uh, I can't do the voice anymore, but 
he used to like it was like his voice was cracking like <laughs> like, a, like a teenager you know um and uh, coming right away yeah something like, like I'm, 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 I'm coming to help you guys one second <laughs> something weird like that you know um, that's great but uh but they they love that and yeah it, um and they made the game more more because they make things more funny because he Lewis would do very like naive thing because he's never been on dungeon before yep. Yep. you know like you know like he didn't know like like who should heal first or she joined up just little funny things you know just to make the game more more yeah. funny yeah. yeah um never to the point where i want to get the characters killed of course you know but uh but it, it made things more in a way challenging for them too because that's they have someone not just someone that they thought as someone coming in as a boon for them but mm -hmm. more like oh wow this is another responsibility we got yeah yeah they were now. responsible for them i like that yeah. no that's good that's good you know, so uh, so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think I think acting or overacting. Overacting. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't say acting. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you. You don't have to be good at this. Yeah. That's why it's overacting. It's just you know, shatner it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would one learn to do that? I I don't know how I learned to do like voices or acting in my game. I, it just to me seemed natural. Well, um. You could try doing um, imitations of people you see on television, hmm. um, but I I think it's less it's less learning the technique and learning to get over our fear of looking foolish. Yeah, because I think everybody can do a bad French accent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have to learn to do that. You have to learn how to. Except that I, you're going to I do a bad thing. Yes, exactly. On mon dieu! Passant! So, exactly. Exactly. You just have to get, a, get over that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's overacting. You don't have to be good at it. Just yeah. do it a lot. Yeah. Do it loudly. If you can't do it well, do it loudly. Yeah. So, so that's our advice. Be prepared to improvise and overact. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you <laughs> for watching. <laughs>